Hello and welcome everyone to another raw review. Today I'm looking at the Logitech G402. Gosh, that shiny Hyperion Fury. No, it's not gosh that shiny. It'd be a great name for a mouse. So, no, the G402 Hyperion Fury. This is toted as an ultra fast FPS gaming mouse. Like gaming mouse, and I believe they're also saying that it's one of the fastest gaming mice in the world. Now, obviously, I've not tested every other mouse in the world, so I can't dispute that claim, but from some of the stuff this includes, I can understand why they're able to call it that and kind of give it that accolade and title. Um, it has an optical sensor uh, with exclusive Delta Zero technology, as well as a high-speed fusion engine built to withstand 420 inches per second IPS, um, it also had eight programmable buttons and controls, including DPI shift, uh, on the fly, four level adjustable DPI settings from 240 to 4000 DPI through that range. Quite glad they haven't really thrown in 8000 DPI on this, which a lot of mice you see thrown in, especially ones that are a lot more expensive than this, because um, you just don't need it really. The average user doesn't really need 8000 DPI, if at all. To be honest, I've never gamed over anything, I think. 3,500, 3,400 is pretty much my upper limit because then it's just way too sensitive and I can't control that. Um, it's got onboard memory profile through a 32-bit ARM processor. It's ultra low friction, um, feet and it's lightweight materials with an improved streamlined design. So that's the box. Bye bye box. This is the Hyperion Fury. Looks awesome. It's got a blue light there. You can change some of the lighting settings. I'll show you all the customization that you can do in the gaming software in a moment. Um, but first, let's have a look at the actual design of the mouse itself. So you obviously have left, left and right mouse buttons. Uh, you have a middle mouse button with the scroll wheel there, and I quite like the scroll wheel. It's not. Um, it's got a good kind of feedback on the scroll wheel, and as you can see, I'm moving that screen over there, up and down. Uh, so that's a good, good, solid mouse wheel like that. Uh, then you have buttons on the side here. These top two it does up and down on the DPI level. So currently I'm set at the maximum DPI level. So you have a four light indicator system here. Well, you have a three light indicator system with four levels on it rather. So at the lowest level now, whack it up one, two lights, whack it up again, three lights, whack it up once more, uh, two lights at the end. That's the fourth level. So the maximum uh, setting. And obviously you can customize what that maximum level is using the Logitech gaming software that you can download. You don't actually need the Logitech gaming software to use this mouse though, it is just plug and play to start with and it will use its onboard defaults. So that's okay, I quite like that, I quite appreciate that. Um, also when I first got this mouse um, to review, it was before the product actually launched, so uh, there wasn't actually any supporting software for it, but I was able to use it just fine. And then these buttons uh, over here are forwards and back, but obviously you can customize these again in the software to whatever you want. Now, finally, this button down here, obviously this makes it stand out a little bit more as a gaming uh, FPS mouse rather than any other kind of genre of game, but it's still actually quite useful. This is like what's called a sniper button. Now that rapidly lowers your DPI. I think in this case by default it's down to 400. So if you're using the maximum 4000 DPI, you know, you're taking it down a significant amount there to 400 DPI. And what that's supposed to do is that if you've got your sniper rifle and you're trying to steady it and get a perfect kill, you hold down that button with the end of your thumb because it should reach naturally just just the end of your thumb grip. I have reasonably normal sized hands I like to think and just the end of my thumb just put a little bit of extra pressure on it and it will hit that button massively lowers the DPI and then you can you know very smoothly and with you know perfect sensitivity hit that target now for me as an RTS gamer Logitech were actually interested to see what I had to say as a strategy gamer how I'd find this FPS mouse um, you know it's obviously not just for SPS, you can use it for whatever game you want. And that's exactly what I did, using it for Total War. It's actually quite useful using that sniper button, not on 400 DPI, but hitting it up a little bit, which again, you can customise, I believe, in the settings. But using it for positioning troops perfectly on settlement walls in Total War Room 2, um, giving them really nice um, waypoint manoeuvres and things like that, it's really useful um, for giving some precise movements when you need to really slow things down with the sensitivity. So actually... I found it perfectly good. I've also been using it for some MMO gaming, for Dota 2. Really nice and easy and um, very useful there. Now, what is 
you know, how are they saying it's an ultra fast gaming mouse? What's the what's the what's the catch with this mouse? What's the you know the big selling point? What's the big thing they're promoting with the G402 Hyperion Fury? Well, it's got something in it called its Fusion Engine or its Fusion Core, which does sound rather awesome. Now it has an optical sensor, but when you move a mouse, sometimes the sensor can't keep up with the speed that you're moving your mouse. So what the Fusion Core does is I'm, I'm gonna have to stop. <laughs> what the Fusion Core does is it um, has an accelerometer in it, which kicks in when the sensor can't keep up with the speed that you're moving your mouse, which is most commonly found in FPS gaming. Which again is why this is you know kind of an ultra fast FPS mouse because that's one of the you know guaranteed games that you're going to have some pretty fast movement, mouse movement in it. So, yeah, again, that's kind of why it's all angled at this FPS um, sort of uh, angle, as you would. Um, but, as I said, you can use it for any other game. But basically, yeah, the accelerometer from the Fusion engine kicks in to take over when the sensor might um, have a lapse or the tiniest bit of lag, which would then show up on your screen as your mouse not moving as quickly or as responsively as you want it to, which in FPS games when it is fast paced action could result in you dying or you know you missing your target so you know it's, it's essentially trying to prevent you from missing your targets uh, and blaming it on your mouse it will ultimately be up to your poor aim or something like that or you know someone strap C4 to a quad bike um, <laughs> always good fun except when it happens to you. So that's how the kind of the fusion engine comes in there and that how that's how it can withstand 420 inches per second although I'm pretty sure your arm would probably fly off if you ever do that. I've seen them testing it in some promotional videos with a mechanical arm to get it going that fast uh, and up to that those sorts of speeds where the fusion engine will then kick in. So that's a really nice feature and I do like that we're kind of coming to this point with game peripherals where you know, there is, it's coming to the point where it's like, there is no way you can kind of blame almost your mouse for the malfunction. It's up to you. It's giving you everything possible to say, at no point within the speed that, you know, you could be moving your arm quickly to the point where your arm would have to fly off and snap off from your body, is this mouse going to let you down? That's what it's trying to say. And that's what I'm getting out of it anyway. So, obviously for me, I didn't get anywhere near 420, or I think it can actually be pushed up to 500, but I didn't get anywhere near that number, I think I was about 100 or something like that when I was rapidly shaking it across my board, but in any game I'm probably not going to hit that high anyway. But it is nice that it's there, it might feel a little bit gimmicky as I said because you're probably never going to get that high, but it's nice that it's got that system in there that's not going to let you down, so that that's nice. Um, so kind of that aside, what you're essentially looking at is a £50, a £49.99 on Amazon, um, gaming mouse that has, you know, angled at the high speed user for FPS, but also any other game you want, with a reasonable number of buttons and uh, some pretty good customization, which I'm going to show you in the software now. So we're now looking at the Logitech gaming software, which you can get uh, by downloading it from the Logitech website for the G402. Uh, it has a variety of features. Um, and to be honest, I'm actually reasonably happy with this gaming software. Some gaming software that comes for peripherals is just too over the top and you you end up, you know, causing more problem than it's worth trying to kind of configure your mouse. But actually the Logitech software, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with the options it has. So here on the main screen, you can choose to use the onboard memory or automatic game detection and use profiles. Um, that it will support once enabled for certain games. On the second option you have the pointer settings and you can configure each mouse button um, and obviously you can switch left and right mouse buttons um, the forward button if you hit it you can edit you can set custom uh, button functions keystroke multi key macro so it's actually reasonably easy to set things up which is which is pretty darn good. Um, the DPI shift you can't set um, through here, the actual DPI shift. The DPI shift actually works, as you can see, this orange button here is the shift, uh, assigned shift, and that uh, will go down to the lowest DPI level that you have selected on your four DPI sensitivity levels. So, obviously, as you can see, it's dropping down to 400 here. You can't drop it any lower than your lowest DPI level, but 400 is more than enough for perfect sniper sensitivity. As you can see, that's the maximum I can kind of circle around with my mouse on 400. 
If I let go, I'm back onto 3,200, and you can see I'm zooming around, whizzing around the whole Logitech Gaming software screen. Um, you can also, if you want to, add one more level into it. It says it has four levels of DPI, but it actually supports five. And if you go up to the next level on your mouse, it just highlights and lights up that last light there. So I could whack it up one more, but I'm not going to. I'm going to drop it back down to four levels. I'm quite happy with that. So very easy to set and change the DPI settings all through here. You can change the uh, report rate as well. And then lighting, you can't change the color. It's blue only for the DPI and the glowing uh, G. But you can change its brightness, which is reflected on the logo here. I have it maximum. You can also have a breathing effect if you want as well. Personally, I'm not much of a fan of a pulsing breathing effect to be fair on my mouse, so I leave it off. Uh, and you can also have DP lighting always on or just on when you obviously activate a button to put the DPI up or down. And you can also put a lighting sleep timer, which is actually pretty useful. Uh, and I'm actually going to enable that because um, I'm going to enable that for. Hmm, to be fair, 10 minutes actually. So that'll put the lights to sleep after 10 minutes of inactivity, which is which is great, especially for me when I leave videos to render overnight or something like that, and I don't want the blue light of my mouse lighting up my entire room all night. So that's pretty good. And then finally, you've got this um, this test where you can test how quickly you're moving the mouse around, and you can try it with the optical sensor and fusion engine on or off. You can also have it as um, inches per second, um, or I assume that's uh, millimeters a second or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but as you can see, with the fusion engine off, reasonable amount of force, moving the mouse pretty quickly along my mouse pad. With it on, you're probably not going to see... It says it's actually at 45. That's not the current one. That's the highest. I've, I've got it to. It's actually, if we clear it, it'll make more sense. You're not going to see much difference because... This is no way fast enough to really engage the fusion engine. So they're going to be pretty much equal there. So that's fine. But um, yeah, anyway, that's pretty much all the settings. Is saying this is this is the main page here. This secondary one and obviously the lighting configuring it. Not too many options, but I'm quite happy that it doesn't overwhelm you. Anyway, let's wrap up the review. Okay, so that was a look at the gaming software from Logitech that pairs up nicely with the G402. Has pretty much everything you'll want bar um, a game profile launcher which I've seen some other reviewers uh, mention has kind of let them down their opinion personally I'm not too bothered about that it's not something that um, I end up using actually with most mice I, I end up configuring my own games um, on kind of a per game basis in the actual game settings um, but yeah the Hyperion Fury 4 G402 performs very well for me I like its design it's quite nice and streamlined as obviously the packaging mentioned it's got rubber grip on the right hand side with ridges to help um, your fingers grip on there properly and it's um, kind of a rubber finish on the uh, left hand side there for your thumb no ridges there but then you don't need any all the buttons are really easy to access it's not overcrowded with any buttons it's just got exactly the ones you need plus I love that it does have that sniper button I actually did miss um, my Rat 5 which had that um, and other mice that I've been using since then don't generally come with one so I do really appreciate that even though I'm not primarily an FPS gamer I do like that I like that obviously you can configure the lighting and everything and yeah I like that it's lightweight um, maybe I wouldn't have minded having the option to add in more weight into the mice in, into the mouse rather but um, it's not really anything too critical. The feet on the end, I would have liked if um, there was a way of Logitech providing some kind of replacement ones or something like that for when these uh, probably will wear down because it's you know high performance. Um, I would have almost expected there to be some kind of option to replace these should they get really worn down. Um, I don't know if Logitech is selling them separately or not, but uh, that would be something to consider. But overall, I really like the design. As I said, it was really easy for me to get my um, my grip sorted on it. Normally, it takes me like a week to break in a mouse, but this took me a day, if that. It's very comfortable to get used to. So, what score am I going to give it? Well, I'm actually going to give it. I'm going to give it a nine out of ten because I really can't fault it. I think it's actually pretty reasonable for the fifty pound price mark. Um, I think that comes in quite nicely with a lot of other um, gaming mice out there at the moment that have similar features. And um, it's a very it's a very comfortable, pleasant mouse to use that 
maybe while the top end of its settings might seem a little bit gimmicky, I do like the, the idea that it's not going to let you down no matter how fast you try and move it. And obviously for FPS gaming and any kind of high motion gaming where you're really going to be throwing your mouse around, I think that's pretty darn good. Um, I always quite like Logitech products and um, yeah, I think it's been a long time since I've used a Logitech mouse and this has uh, rekindled my fondness of their design. So anyway, that's my review of the Logitech G402 Hyperion Fury. Links in the description where you can buy one, you can check out more details about it. Feel free to leave me a comment if you've got any questions. Um, you know, thumb up the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again next time. Ciao for now.